Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for joining us bright and early on this sunny Saturday morning. <laughs> So we very much appreciate you joining us here today because I, I personally and all of us feel like there is a lot to talk about and it's very exciting um, to discuss the Let Girls Learn initiative. So this morning we would love to provide an overview of the Let Girls Learn initiative, um, some examples of how it came to be and its potential impact in the field with Peace Corps and our partner organizations. And then we would for sure like to turn it over to all of you and get your questions and your comments and have some dialogues. Um, and so that was really the beginning of my interest in women's education and gender issues. I'd always focused on children and then I worked with these women and realized we really need to start with these women to have lasting impact. And girls' education has been a hot topic for a long time. So in essence, Let Girls Learn isn't necessarily the big wow, something new, but it's harnessing something that is so critical, that we know is so critical to development across the board. Um, you know, girls' education has been touted as like the magic bullet, right? It's like the key to development. Educate women, and so much else follows. Statistics show with improved literacy, you have a decrease in child mortality, better household nutrition. I mean, it's really an investment, not just in that particular woman, but in her family and her community and for future generations. So it's a very, very important topic that we're discussing today. And globally, I would say that girls' education has had a lot of progress. There have been shared goals with the MDGs, the SDGs, but you know, all, there has definitely been a global commitment. But that doesn't mean that it is easy, and it doesn't mean that it is a solution that has been solved. I was listening last night to a great uh, video on the Scroll World Forum site about girls' education, and Grassa Michelle said, is that how I'm pronouncing her name right? Um, Grassa Michelle said, you know, there's been lots of global initiatives, and we've made great progress in primary school enrollment. The challenge now is to continue that, to allow girls to continue schooling, but the school access is just one piece of the pie. Basically, she was saying, it's so much more than just building schools and providing teachers. You really need change at the grassroots. You need to get their families to commit to sending those girls to school. You need their communities to support them going to school. It is a lot of cultural change that needs to happen, and it takes time. So even though girls' education is prominent and um, being implemented, I think that Peace Corps holds a very unique position to really advance this initiative to, because we are on the ground in so many countries building relationships, working on that community change and awareness. So I am delighted that Peace Corps is partnering with so many people to really make this a reality. So um, I would like to introduce our panelists today. Um, on the far left, we have Krista Rigolo. Am I saying your name right now? Rigolo, apologies. Um, Krista was recently appointed as the new program director for Let Girls Learn um, with Peace Corps. So how long have you been on the job? For three this? weeks. Three weeks as Let Girls Learn director. So very excited to have you leading this initiative. Krista has worked for Peace Corps for over 10 years in multiple positions, primarily in the Africa region. She has um, worked as desk officer, program and training specialist, chief of program and training, and was also a Peace Corps volunteer in the Philippines from 1998 to 90. Um, and Krista credits her Peace Corps service in setting her career on a path of international development and peace building. As many of us can say, our Peace Corps service really sh uh, shaped our years after. This is <laughs> Janet. Janet is on the NPCA board as well as a NorCal member. And Janet um, is also the chairman of the One World Children's Fund, which is another great organization that um, she will probably share some information with you today. Janet has extensive on the ground experience through her time with Peace Corps, where she began working with village women in Andhra Pradesh, India, as part of a UN sponsored applied nutrition program. Janet became more deeply involved as a board member of NPCA. Thanks to Lynn. Um, Kate is also an RPCB from Uganda, has had extensive experience in the field of working with women. Kate's an international development professional with a background in program management and system strengthening. She spent three years as a Peace Corps volunteer um, working in, with various institutions focused on gender mainstreaming, humanitarian relief, economic and social empowerment. 
In Uganda, she helped establish formal and informal groups aimed at constructing social support networks, providing tangible skills and financial opportunities, addressing gender rights, and mitigating violence for at-risk women and girls, all critical pieces to the girls' education component. In Malawi, Kate worked uh, with government officials and NGOs and CBOs, community-based groups, to develop partnerships, build capacity, enhance service delivery, and establish tools for knowledge and resource sharing. Undoubtedly, she is passionate about gender equity, post-conflict recovery, and community-centered sustainable development. And Kate will provide some of that on-the-ground Peace Corps experience that is so essential to this whole initiative. And lastly, but certainly not least, one of our most valued local representatives, Lynn Foden, who is um, our new NorCal board president. So we're very excited to have you here. One of her many times, and it's done a lot to make this conference a success for all of you. So thank you, Lynn. Lynn, um, the other hat she wears is the chief of international operations for Room to Read, which is right over the bay based in San Francisco. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Room to Read, but they build schools, promote literacy, develop local language books um, with a focus on girls. Um, and there, as the Chief of International Operations, Lynn coordinates and support teams, tools, and systems for the implementation of Room to Read's country programs. She has over 25 years of experience working in developing countries with public, private, and nonprofit organizations. Um, she has overseen uh, operational implementation of programs. She's also seen, uh, overseen the evacuation of programs and lots of transition. <laughs> Sorry, I'm ad here. <laughs> Thank you, all your things. Lynn, has, uh, Lynn was responsible for the strategic vision and daily operations for 27 countries um, while working with Peace Corps as chief of operations for the Africa region. So Lynn brings to the table a lot of Peace Corps experience um, from the ground up. She began her Peace Corps service as a volunteer, water and sanitation volunteer in Zaire from 84 to 87. Good morning everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Great, it's so exciting to see the room so full because at Peace Corps we're really excited about this initiative. Um, I could introduce it, but I'm actually gonna let the First Lady introduce it, and so Lynn, if you can cue up the video. We didn't think about the sound. Let Girls Learn, which is a whole of government initiative. Um, all of the agencies that work, federal agencies that work in the space of education, especially girls' education, are working in Let Girls Learn. We have the honor, this is a really great honor for Peace Corps. We participate in several whole of government initiatives like PEPFAR, President's Emergency Plan for Age Relief, Feed the Future. But this time, Peace Corps was chosen to be the lead implementing agency. And so this is a big deal for us. And can you imagine, can you think why the First Lady of all the agencies at her disposal, why she chose Peace Corps? This is participatory. <laughs> In this country, we're on the ground. Let me ask you something. If you, if you could close your eyes for a minute and remember a girl that you worked with during your Peace Corps service, can you picture a girl? I have another reason why. Okay. Isn't Peace Corps like something ridiculously like 60% women? We we uh, we do we do yeah, the demographics so, of yeah, of, yeah. I mean, having a lot of women yeah. lends itself to being a great organization to promote. Absolutely, absolutely. We're a uniquely placed. We have volunteers in communities on the ground. They have that access and that entree to young girls in a way that USAID or other organizations don't. And so it's a real honor for us that that was recognized by the first lady and that we're we're able to do this. Um, when so I've been on the job three weeks. And I walk around with a smile on my face. I feel like I won the job lottery. You know, this is a phenomenal job. Um, when I think about Let Girls Learn, I think of four P's: passion, programming, profile, and partnerships. And so, passion. Meredith already talked about this a little bit. Um, girls, especially in their transition from girlhood to womanhood, it's an especially vulnerable time in girls' lives, and they're they are probably the most at-risk demographic group for exploitation. Um, we know that 62 million girls that should be in school are not. We know that families are often 
push to make choices about who they educate between boys and girls, and seeing more economic potential in boys, they will choose boys over girls. We know there are lots of barriers to why girls don't go to school. Um, that there might not be latrines, safe latrines, separate latrines where they can go, especially when they make that transition and they start menstruating. That it's a very vulnerable, kind of embarrassing, self-conscious time, and so girls might choose not to go for that. Uh, but we do know the flip side, again, as Meredith said, that if a girl is educated, she will delay marriage, she will delay childbirth, she will have better spacing of her children, she, her children will have better nutrition, she will have a higher income potential, and so it makes a real obvious choice that we would work with girls. And like Meredith said as well, it's actually the silver bullet to development. There's science behind this, there's evidence that shows if you educate a girl, you can change a whole community and you can change a nation. And so given Peace Corps' unique placement, given that we have volunteers on the ground working day in, day out with girls, and the fact that this is a known, proven <coughs> development strategy, it makes sense the director made a bold move and she, she said, Peace Corps in, Peace Corps all in. And so we're taking this on in a big way. So that's passion. We should be passionate about this. Programming. So people have been asking, um, is there a Let Girls Learn program? Do we have Let Girls Learn volunteers? Is there a Let Girls Learn sector? And we thought about this and kind of kicked it around and in the end we chose no. There are not specific Let Girls Learn volunteers and there's not a Let Girls Learn sector. We believe that this is work that any and all volunteers should do, regardless of the sector. And I hope you will be a part of this effort. Go to letgirlslearn.peacecorps.gov for more information about how you can help. Thanks so much. Great. That's exciting, right? Yay! That's super exciting. And you can check that out on the website. Um, <laughs> Thank you for censoring. <laughs> So this is an example of partnerships. That's kind of what we partnerships. Sometimes partnerships work. Sometimes they have like it, it, the initial part of the partnerships. It can be a little bit rocky. Yeah. You're kind of getting to know each other. You're kind of figuring out what works and wasn't, what doesn't work in the partnership, and you make adjustments in the early stages. And so we're making adjustments and we work together for a long term of partnership. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> I know that you're going to pass off to Jim and talk about it, but there's a fabulous video that clearly we cannot show you today of Michelle Obama and Barack Obama at the White House uh, inauguration of this initiative. And I watched that on YouTube. I'm sure if you just Google Obama, let girls learn. Yeah. It is so moving. I yeah. loved it. So I highly recommend you to do that too. Thank you. And just keep a, give me a high sign, okay, so I can keep us moving on here. Um, what a privilege it was for me. I go to Washington, D.C. every end of February, first part of March for Peace Corps Week, and end up on the Hill advocating for increased funding for Peace Corps. Peace Corps can't do it itself, and the NPCA shows up. This year, we had 75 people on a, the, White House, the, the White House. Congress had closed down. It was so snowy, everybody got home. Not everybody got home. 75 RPCVs and Peace Corps, some Peace Corps volunteers and recently returned volunteers showed up in the halls of Congress and found people at home and talked about adequate funding for Peace Corps. Two days before that, because of my advocacy work, I happened to have had the privilege of being in the White House with the director, Carrie hessler Radlett, and sitting next to her was the NPCA president, Glenn Bloomhorst. And the First Lady pointed out very clearly that this was not only a Peace Corps partnership, but also an NPCA partnership. That all the return volunteers in this nation and around the world have a role to play. And those of you who are associated with um, affiliate groups, countries of service, or NorCal, already know that you're supporting programs in your countries of service or others that are supporting girls' education. We're doing the work. We just now need to bring focus to that. The NPCA is focused on partnerships and don't act, it's for not. And he said, if you are not going to your representative 
whatever, a supporter or a non-supporter, as in you voted for them or you didn't vote for them, you need to let them know that funding Peace Corps is critical. Critical. And when we ended up, that small group of people because of the bad weather, on the hill on that day, there were people in their offices. You know how we could tell that they were in their offices? Newspapers get dropped off. And if the newspaper had been picked up, we knew that somebody was in that office. So we would walk in, and there they were in their jeans. Yeah, I wanted to, yeah, anyway, it was very interesting. But we ended up being able to say, here is an initiative, Let Girls Learn. Peace Corps needs more funding. And with that additional funding, we'll be able to do more. So I, my message to you and to all of us is, work through your affiliate groups, look at Peace Corps partnerships, look at Water Charity, look at all the ways that you can be an advocate. And I have to say that there's no better person as a profile for this than the First Lady. When the President introduced her in the White House on that morning, I have to say it was precious, but most important in that, the young woman who introduced the President of the United States, Charlene Espinosa, who is right now at the same time in a panel on the other side of campus, did a fabulous job. She followed Susan Rice, um, a whole slew of very well-placed women in our government, and that recently returned, evacuated from Liberia, RPCV, brought the house down. She was articulate, she knew what she was talking about, and she was passionate about educating girls. We've got it. This is a program perfect for this community, and so we'll go right down to a volunteer recently returned who can talk about it really on the ground. But again, action, telling stories, but action is where it is. brought them in 
And I had given them assignments to kind of keep them engaged in the business program because I knew they wanted the practical skill. They didn't, they didn't have the interest really in the business aspect of it. So I wanted to keep them engaged. And so I had an exercise for them and I, I made them get up in front of the class. I made them give speeches and I asked them to introduce themselves in English and to talk about what changes they had experienced from joining the group. And they were supposed to talk about, or they were supposed to focus on eye contact and tone of voice and body language. But what I was really hoping was that they would focus on, or that they would just get used to hearing their voices. They would get used to speaking out loud and communicating with others because there's so much value in that as well. And I wasn't really expecting a lot, actually. I, I kind of assumed that they would get up and they would be very timid, they would be shy, they would be covering their face. Because when we started the program, not one of them would look myself or my counterpart directly in the eye. And so I knew this was going to be incredibly challenging for them. So I, sorry? Um, so I was humbled immediately. They got up and they owned it. They got up there, they spoke through their nervousness, they um, spoke with authority, they spoke with confidence, they respected one another, and every single one of them came prepared and did the assignment, which was amazing to me. Um, and then there was one woman that got up, Betty, and she came with this laundry list of changes. And she started saying smartness, reasoning, discipline, courage, punctuality, which I think was a joke. <laughs> um, but it was really courage, I think, that hit me the most. And, and she said, you know, ladies, we have the courage to get up here and to speak in front of each other. We have the courage to get up here and work together. And I remember at that point, sorry. I remember, <coughs> excuse me, at that point, I turned around and I looked at my counterpart who was sitting behind me, and he was just sitting there with this look on his face, his arms crossed, and he just knew. And when I looked at him, everything that I was feeling, he was wearing on his face, and it was so much pride. And I think in that instant, I understood that no matter what the final outcome, no matter whether they graduated, whether they finished the course, that we had already made a difference in their lives. Because those women right there in front of us were not the same women that came in three or four weeks before. And I think that's the challenge for all of us, is finding a way to measure that impact. Because it's as equally valuable. And I think that um, that's the value add that we bring as Return Peace Corps volunteers, because that's what we see but it's difficult to measure. And so I know in this, in this realm where everything is numbers and statistics, um, that can gauge the impact just, just as much. So. Thank you. As you can see, it takes uh, Peace Corps leadership, resources, advocacy, but at the end of the day, it's just that human element of remembering this is about girls and women and having hope and belief and high expectations of them because inevitably they will rise to the expectations. Great, I am going to try to see if this will um, work because I think um, with, um, so I, uh, as <coughs> in, they, in, I, do, I work for, uh, for Room to Read now. And um, our, uh, our work, we do literacy and girls' education programs uh, in 10 countries, three in Africa and seven in Asia. And um, the core of our work in girls' education is helping to uh, develop the life skills, critical thinking, and educational capacity for girls to be able to graduate high school with the skills to navigate key life decisions. And we do this through working with what we call social mobilizers, who are women in the community or girls in the community, um, who are working directly with the girls' scholars in the programs. 
And um, I have a very short video here um, where a couple of our girl scholars are talking about um, the program. And so I think um, hearing from them is probably going to be more interesting, hopefully, than hearing from me if you can actually hear this. So we'll see how this goes. If it doesn't, we'll quickly change over. children. I'm illiterate and I have a hard life. Even though I'm illiterate, I want more for FUNAM. Can you pull the mic out? I want my children to be educated. In grade six, I continued to hope that I could stay in school. I was always determined to stay in school, even if my family didn't have enough to pay for tuition classes. I kept studying and asked the teacher to let me study for free. I think you can read that. Hi, uh, Suzanne Marks, uh, Atlanta Area Return Peace Corps Volunteers. I'm here to say that our Atlanta Area Return Peace Corps Volunteer group uh, supports and will hopefully provide some funding to the Let Girls Learn. be a model for the rest of uh, the regional groups to follow. The regional groups really have a big role to play in making this a reality. Each of you goes home. I hope you're a member and involved in your local regional group because it's very powerful. Um, I'm sorry if I can't reach you back here. Alan, if you'd like to speak. Yes, Alan Olson uh, from Uganda. And I'm glad to see Catherine here as well. Uh, I, uh, before I heard of Let Your Own Learn, I heard of another program in Uganda, actually, uh, called Glow. Um, Have people heard of this one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I was thinking, you know, okay, I won't go through the explanation of it. I do not know the details of it, but I heard about this long before uh, Left Road Learn came along with a lot of the same mission. But the interesting thing is, I heard about this program from two Taipei personality Ugandan males independently. Success. Quite surprised. Wow, they were actually supporting this program GLOW. What does GLOW stand for? For those few people that did it, I brought my, I brought my wife along so I keep me on track here. Uh, GLOW stands for Girls Leading Our World. And I think Peace Corps is involved in that. Yeah, and, and very definitely. You know, I got back there in October to help, by the way, Peace Corps had its 50th anniversary of uh, arriving in Uganda just last year. And I was uh, unfortunately the only RPCB to make a trip back there to help them celebrate. Uh, as part of Friends of Uganda, very much enjoyed that. And come to find out, wow, one of the things that PCBs are doing now is having specialized camps for all sorts of things, and one of the major things is for GLOW. Girl, let, uh, girls leading our world. There is an equivalent for boys, uh, and that's not, I understand as well. Uh, Catherine, I'd like to expand on that. That's, that's what I found. I found it amazing. Thank you. Another great example of Peace Corps uh, thinking in the community is working on women's empowerment. Meredith, can I just make a point? I'm sorry. Yes, please. Um, so I talked a lot about the work we're doing with girls, and we get all excited about that. But you raise a good point. We can't do this without thinking about boys and men as well. And so that's definitely another part of this program is where we have to make good men, you know? And so you have to work with them as well. So we have Camp Grow, we have Camp Build, and we have other opportunities to work with boys and men. Men as partners is something that came out of HIV work as well. So we, while we're focusing on girls, the girls go to these camps and they say, this is great, I've had this wonderful transformation. Can you tell it to my dad? Can you tell it to my brother? Can you tell it to my male teacher? So we are working with them. Also really quick to kind of I'm Carol we are supporting girls, providing scholarships for girls, transitioning from high school to college because in that country it does take a little extra tract of, of learning to get them at the level where they can function in the university. So I, no Peace Corps volunteers, no prospect for Peace Corps volunteers inside. I would really like to be able to explore with you 
a way that we can have some of the resources of Let Girls Learn to help this for our program and many others that are helping activate the education of girls in Pakistan. There's such a tremendous need. Carol, thank you for what you're doing. And I want to encourage you to stay afterwards and touch base with Krista before you leave. And I'm going to take a few more questions, but I really want to encourage the value of these sessions is, yes, you are very valuable, thank you. But really, the bang for the buck is what happens after we stop talking and you talk to each other. So please stick around for a few minutes. Uh, this gentleman right here, and then I'll come back to the middle. Thanks. Abel Strasser, Bolivia 66, 68. I wanted to explain a little bit about how this is working. I think we're the first group that uh, can do like a project. We became water charity. I uh, founded water charity about eight years ago. We partnered with NPCA as of about three or four months ago. We've been attributing all of our projects since then. And so far, there are 40 projects that, as, a, as partners, we've uh, worked together on. Um, all of our projects are funded through the Peace Corps Partnership Program. And uh, that is how we had the opportunity to be able to step in and fund this first project in Cambodia. Just uh, as an extension as to how this thing is going to go in the future, we're already working with the country director in Albania. And uh, we have a return volunteer couple who has built one bathroom there already prior to uh, Let Girls Learn. And we are talking about building 100 bathrooms in Albania, and hopefully this will become a large program under Let Girls Learn. are essential to make this work, and each of you do great stuff, so please don't be shy about sharing your resources and insights. Would you mind uh, just speaking loud and sorry, I can't get to you. Hi, I'm Sarah McMeans. I'm with um, the Peace Corps Alumni Foundation for, for Philippine Development, and this has been, uh, since 1983, an initiative of volunteers who serve in the Philippines. We were narrowly focused to give scholarships to uh, young people in the Philippines. We do give scholarships to both men and women, but many of our scholarships go to women. And they, I was so struck by that video because the girls that we are supporting really come out of a situation like those two young Cambodian girls. And we have supported uh, 170 young people in the Philippines to go to college, and, and now they have an alumni association that is helping the, the rest of the, 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 the new scholars that come in. And I was just struck by by this, this whole thing that this is not something that happened while we were volunteers in service, but it's something that happened afterwards. And we really are making an impact on a lot of women's lives. And it's, it's just, I just wanted to share that with people. Thank you. Yes, you guys have been amazing as Peace Corps volunteers, but so much of it is when you return from Peace Corps over these years, all the insight that you have gained and the experiences and the networks and the efforts that you have put in to build programs like that. And I want to encourage you all to take Krista's card before you leave because each of you may have an amazing program like your scholarship program that they can distribute to their country offices and really share those resources. It may be, you know, a lot of it is about sharing those resources. Yes. I'm wondering if somebody could speak to uh, Steve Miller's my name is uh, Malaysia. Um, what's happening in country to make volunteers aware of the program and resources? My daughter just started it and she'd be very interested to know how to tap in. Because Stephen has to speak to you know, he's in country. Where is your daughter? Uh, Cameroon. Cameroon. Okay, awesome. Cameroon's not one of our initial programs yet, but we hope to get there. So we're starting right from the moment you go to staging. Triggered something that has been on my mind since I first heard about this program is that Peace Corps is so uniquely positioned to do the part of community community attitude changing because we're on the ground in villages with with relationships, but Peace Corps volunteers cannot address the single big, what I think is the single biggest barrier to girls' education, which is scholarships. Uh, and so, but our PCBs are in a position, position to do something about it. So, um, in the Gambia, our PCBs are organizing scholarship programs. Local PCBs on the ground are referring students, girls in particular, to those programs, which can then, so it's, it's a, can then fund the scholarships. Funds don't go through the PCB, they go right to the school because that's, that's the, you don't want these volunteers to become sources of funds, but I think that's a, a unique opportunity for cooperation between us and the folks who are on the ground right now. Yes. Uh, 
very quick, we have one minute left. So I'm just going to say, Michael, thank you, because that is really the key issue, is that what can each of us do at home to support this? And I think, if, it, if my understanding is correct, that the Let Girls Learn initiative is set up like a scholarship that Peace Corps volunteers can apply for, similar to a pet program. But it's Peace and Peace Fund. Yeah. yeah. So the nice thing with donating directly to the Let Girls Learn Fund is that not all education has to be in a formal classroom setting. And that's the, the one of the big things as a, as a Peace Corps volunteer, you have the ability to design an education program that may not necessarily be in that traditional formal setting. So that's why it's a really great idea to donate to that program in particular. Thank you, there's so much potential, so much opportunity. You've all taken the first step. You're reconnecting with the Peace Corps community. You're engaged and interested, so take it one step further and please talk with each other, get Krista's card, and share your resources and ideas because each of us will make this, this vision and this initiative a reality. Thank you for joining us.